<laughs> Welcome to the pastel pencil throwdown. <laughs> you guys are so much fun. Oh my goodness. I'm really excited. Welcome everyone. We got quite a few of you in here already. Temple, welcome. Stacy, Jody, welcome. Nice to see you here. Um, Laura, Peg, um, Diane, Loretta. That's awesome. I'm so glad you guys are here. I'm really excited to try this out today. We're doing our first multi-week um, piece where we're carrying it over to this week and I have a feeling it's gonna be a Tuesday and Thursday event. So, hi Martha, welcome, I'm so glad you're here. And um, yeah, I hope you guys have all had a great weekend. Um, I've been plugging away myself, um, working on my new class and getting uh, filming going. So I'm looking forward, I'm getting closer to be able to show you guys a sneak peek of it. And um, the other thing before we get started, I'm also working on loading my store with all of these originals we've been creating. And I also have two framed pieces that um, I frame my five by tens on down. So I do little minis and I do these five by tens. So I'll share with you today what the framed ones look like and everything will be going live on Thursday. So I'll probably send out another newsletter. Um, if you're not a part of my newsletter, definitely go to um, my website. If you sign up for the free Pan Pastel um, lesson area membership, um, you'll be signed up for my newsletter too. And yeah, so I'm really excited. I got a lot of good things in the works and the weather's getting nicer. I live in the Pacific Northwest. So it's, I went out and had a wonderful sunny walk today. So that's been really nice. Welcome, Jell. So glad you're here. That's awesome. You guys are, it's so nice to see people coming a week after week. And that has meant so much to me. I know we lost a couple, a few of our Australians because of the daylight savings time, but hopefully they'll pop in and say hi later in the lives or through um, comments. Um, I definitely, Michelle, I miss you already, <laughs> but Hi, Cameron, welcome. Thank you for saying hi. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, what we're um, gonna be starting on today. And I know I'm gonna be doing a lot of the pencils, but I also have a few things we gotta bring up before I do that. And one of them is this dark area. I like to push all these back. So I use an extra dark pastel for that when I really know that's what I'm gonna do in that space. So I'm gonna work on that. I have my um, Diane Townsend extra dark and these are a little bit harder than, um, well, they're, way, they're, they're definitely harder than your pa um, pan pastels. All the stick pastels are harder than your pan pastels. But um, if, if I was using the pastel pencil, this um, Carbothello pencil is about as dark as the, the extra dark Diane Townsend. So if you just have pencils, you can get that same value scale. So I like to push my darks to a 10 in some places. And um, I, I try to create a really good balance of, um, of values in my piece. And when I really started understanding value is when I just feel like my, my artwork went up a level. I leveled up. And if you're having trouble with your artwork, definitely uh, convert your piece to black and white and see if you have these balances of values in here. Because a lot of times we get stuck in the mid-tones when we're new because we just can't see it all. So, and be patient with yourself because I probably didn't really start seeing values till a few years ago and I've just been honed in on it ever since. So it all takes time. We can only take so much information in. And what's most important, 90% of the battle is just showing up and, and creating. So um, I'm gonna work on that. And then I also um, have a few lines left in here that I'm gonna be putting in with um, pastel pencils anyway. And I definitely gotta work on this whole area down here. So there's a lot to do. Um, it's interesting breaking down the um, painting in a live when I pick something, cause you're on my leading edge right now. And 
The reason why I word it that way is some people are like, well, this is pretty difficult. Well, with the lives, I'm just doing demos and having fun and creating and painting in my zone right now. If I would teach a class, I would definitely teach it to um, more, a little bit easier. So I, um, I'm just trying to keep these lives sustainable and fun. And so this is why this is two weeks long because you're working on my leading edge and I just hope it inspires you and just shows you what I do and can inspire you to maybe loosen up more or there'll be some gems to take away during these demos. Looks like I got a first question here. What is the difference between the Carbothello and the Faber-Castell pastel pencils? Is it the hardness of the pastel? I have the Carbothellos and I'm thinking about purchasing the Faber-Castells. Okay, that's a great question. Love pa um, pastel pencils. The difference is, is that the Faber-Castell pit pencils are a little earthier. They're beautiful. They, um, if you would think about like Japanese colors, like Holbein, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, I'm probably not, but um, they're a lot brighter and more vibrant. And uh, Carbothello's really fits in that little bit more brighter, but you can get all your color ranges using them. Uh, the pit pencils go a little bit more earthier. They're, they have bright colors too, but I want them both because I like, they're all different. I really don't get a lot of duplicates with um, the both sets. So if the grays would probably be the duplicates, the whites, you know, there's definitely going to be some, but for the most part, um, they have a lot of um, just subtle differences that the Carbothello um, doesn't have. And if you're mixing with pastel pencils, you can get all the color ranges. But um, I, when I'm doing a lot of my mark making, I am just going in there and I'm not mixing and building up layers. So that's why I like a lot of pastel pencils because I want that color right away. I'm not trying to build up a skin tone and um, create all those luminous layers with the pastel pencils. I like to do that you know, abstracty mark making vibe. So that's why I have so many. So I hope that answers your, your question, Jill. And I know Jill, you have another name. You're Danielle. I got you written down, girl. You're from the Netherlands. <laughs> so I'm getting it. I'm getting it. it. Takes me some time. Stacy, I'm glad you're in for the two to three weeks. So I'm going to go and get warmed up myself. I have, um, I have this pretty much like thought out to a certain degree, but I still have some unknowns. I really like to keep unknowns in my work because um, it keeps me interested and um, I don't get bored. So this is a, a chunky <laughs> pastel and um, I'm just using it to block in these darks in here because I, I really like in my style, I have found over time I really like punching through the paper. And um, to me, I like to bring in like what's behind the whole vibe is the universe. So um, I always feel like we're all connected. You know, I like to express that through my art and there's usually a thread throughout all my pieces that have some of this in it. And so it's just something I like to do. I have to be careful up here around the face. I'll probably use a pastel pencil with the chin. And this does shed a lot more. Sticks are, are um, they, they shed. And um, we're using a 600 grade UART um, ivory paper this time um, from UART. And um, it isn't really meant for, for sticks as much, but they work just fine on there. You just only get so many layers. A lot of um, basic, like all stick pastel artists, when they're, when they're all in on sticks, they usually will use like a 400 grade paper. So I have a, I work on an easel, so all of this is going down and shedding down into my tray. I might have to tap this piece off but you can see how much I've just punched into that, what the difference is. And I also have my uh, prints out, so we're gonna be able to see the differences. <laughs> I just ordered the Caran d'Ache 76 today. 
I'm so excited to get them. Laura, congratulations. That's a great set. Um, for those of you who don't know about the Caran d'Ache pastel pencils, they are a lot softer. They are beautiful. They have a beautiful range in them, um, but they are a little bit softer and they're a little bit more finicky on um, sharpening. But uh, I love my Caran Dashes. I, I love all the pastel pencils. Like, I think if you're buying high quality pigmented pastel pencils, like the Pitt pencils, the Caran Dash, um, Derwent's really good. I don't have as many Derwent um, because I already bought a lot of my sets. Um, the reason what gets me to buy other pastel pencils is like the purples. Purples are really um, sparse and, and greens can be a little bit challenging. So like this is my pastel pencil for Derwent. I don't even think I have another Derwent in my stash on here right now. But this is the Derwent. Um, Dioxine purple. It's a P280. You just, I can't find this purple anywhere else. I was obsessed with getting dark purples, so that's why I have that, that one. But, um, oh, you're Dutch too, Jell. That's awesome. My, I married a Dutchman. He's half Dutch and half Norwegian. His, um, yeah, dad is Dutch, so it's been a, a wonderful name to inherit. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It all oh, look at you. <laughs> Super dark and rich, just like my heart. I love that, Stacy. Yeah, I, oh, that's great. I'm glad you opened a few open stock, Laura. That's a great tip, you guys. If you're unsure about the pastel pencils, you know, just order a few open stock. They're really not that expensive and they last a good while. So um, I definitely would suggest the open stock like Laura did. And then she found out she really liked them and and she went all in, you know, and uh, I love pastel. Karen Dash is awesome. I have those in Carbothello. Yeah, those are great. Those are great. Well, welcome everyone. We've got quite a few of you in here today. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, don't be shy. Feel free to ask questions if you have questions. I think I'm going to go into that spot with a pencil and I'm going to get this And I'm gonna have to get those edges with the pencil because I just don't want them to be too. Because I have that gold in there. I don't mind burying the gold a little bit, but I don't want to bury this gold. I'm reserving this spot right here because I don't know if I want it to fluff out a little more. And once this goes down, it's a little bit more challenging to get up. So yeah, that's, that's pretty black. So I'm going to show you now I'm going to take my um, I actually had to get a, a towel that was some soap in it because I wasn't going to be able to get that off my fingers. I usually use little finger cots, but I thought I might have had a, a dark wand, but it doesn't look like I do right now. So I'll use my green. And I'm just going to go and uh, smooth down some of the edges here. Because I don't know how I'm going to want this, if it's going to gradient in or not. So this spot is a little unknown. It will knock off some and shed if you touch it too much because the sticks don't go into the paper the same way. I have a violet stick. It's it's really beautiful. It's an extra dark, but it sheds a lot on the 600 grade paper. It doesn't really like sit in there like I would like. So I'm going to take this pastel pencil, just the black, and I'm going to just carefully go in and really define that separation there. So this is where a lot of patience is, I find, is just realizing this whole piece is a journey. 
I love this stage of the piece. Like this is my favorite. I could hang out in here for a while. I think it's because I kind of know where I'm at. I know where I'm going. I've done enough of them. So I, I really know the payoff and the pencils are just so much fun to play with. But I like to use them to really, um, I like to loosen up more. You know, I, I hope eventually I can even get looser in my work, but I also really like to define some of the areas that I want to be structured and then break up others. And I just found that's kind of my, my happy place. I'll check chat here in just a second. Just helps really clean up some spots. We got to warm up to this pencil throwdown. You know, I, I'm i realizing the pattern. You guys, it's eight weeks. No, I think it's nine weeks. No, it's eight weeks. This is eight, eight weeks of doing this live streaming. And um, I'm starting to see patterns. I learned stuff myself, of course, on this journey. And one of them is I have to warm up too. <laughs> and so this first, you know, few minutes, 10, 15, I don't know, I would say even the first half hour, I'm just getting some of these things that I've been thinking about cleaned up and it's a great time to warm up for myself. So more and more I'm liking using the um, pan pastel as an underpainting and really blocking in so it looks really chunked up and then I just really enjoy using these pastel pencils to break things up. It gives me that whole mixed media vibe when I was using like colored pencils and acrylic paints and things like that. I really love that freedom and I, I think that's why I'm really loving this because I have a background in all of that. And I, I think that's been kind of my goal is just recreating these moments that I like using the one medium. And I find that challenging and fun. Okay, I'm gonna check chat. I've been meaning to ask, but keep forgetting. I know you use Unsplash Ref for references. I do as well, but I wonder if you get better picks with a paid subscription or do you just use the free? So Laura, that's a great question. Um, I just use Unsplash personally. I'm not um, reference heavy. I do a lot of my own drawings. Um, the times I use the most references is like for something like this. Like say I'm doing an animal, I'll probably use like three or four different references because it's not in the position I want it in. And so I'll use references for like that or references for the fur, for color. But a lot of times I like to change things up a lot. So I wouldn't really buy a paid service, but with you have to figure out on your journey what works for you. And if the paid service, you get more inspiration, then um, I would totally try it out. But for me, Unsplash has so many resources. It's just, you gotta dig. Um, I have collections and I just have things saved up and then I go and make make little collections in Unsplash. And um, so like this was the reference I'm using for those of you who are just joining us. And um, you can see how much I've changed her up. So I'll, I'll use it usually for like the proportions or a structure or a shape. And then I have fun um, making it what my my own in that way and um, that's just fun for me I, I don't think there's anything wrong copying a reference to as exact i just really like trying to change things up and um i have all these ideas and um i like to draw so i um that's kind of what motivates me and gets me motivated with like a reference so a lot of times i'll take that reference and then i'll put it through my tracing paper. I'll map out the spots that I really want the structure to be right and I'll use it for those shapes. And then I, I, I have a ball with it. That's just what's fun to me is going and going, what's this idea look like? And then I'll layer up with my tracing paper and just try all these different ideas on different layers. And that's really fun to me. Um, so I hope that answered your question. Which black pastel stick do you use? Okay, you guys, so these black um, Diane Townsend Extra Darks, you have to be really careful when you order them. Sometimes they have Extra Darks that aren't um, Extra Dark, and you'll get like a dark violet. Um, I've ordered one in every um, 
color family like reds uh, I think this one's red, but see, they're so dark, sometimes you can't see the, the, the variation unless you put them all together. Um, so I would get like a blue-black or a blue-green, or that's what I would probably order. Um, and then you, you just have to make sure they're the extra, that they look black when you're ordering them. Uh, they shouldn't have, you shouldn't be able to notice that they're not black. And they're just, um, what's cool is like when you use all black, sometimes I can be dead. And that's what I like about these Diane Townsend is it, is it has a little bit of color in it. So, but I can barely tell on this one and it is pretty um, solid. I think if I put them all together, I might be able to notice, but yeah, you really don't notice. So I don't know what this stick is. And I had them all mapped out and I had them positioned, but that's the problem with stick pastels is you just can't really map them out and tell you exactly what that color is. But I have had people try to order like the 54D or whatever, and then they got a brighter, a, a brighter color. And I don't know if they're messing up on their end, like the people that are packing it, but um, I, I, it's usually the extra darks that I'm, I'm ordering. Okay. Awesome. I think I'm caught up on questions. So if I miss anything, just holler at me. Okay, so I'm feeling really good about pushing that back and now I can work on just a couple of the spots. I'm gonna use a pencil right here. I want this to go black. I just thought about the eye and carrying that black around a bit. And when you are on the paper, the, the pastel pencils don't shed as much, but they still do shed a little bit, more than the pan pastel. Yeah, I like that. And then I was thinking for this little squiggle through here, I'm gonna use this really bright pink. I have it in these um, three spots already, and I'm thinking this would be a lot of fun to, to carry it through. So that's what I was going for that. Thank you for all the hearts, you guys. When, whenever to my husband, I'm like, it's that camera. Thank you, I pretty appreciate it. I really like that little feature. Um, so I'm just gonna go in here, and you know, a lot of times I like to have some pan pastel underneath on this layer, and, um, I, uh, when I'm putting, I'm wondering, this is actually a little bit brighter. Let me, I have this, that's not that. Okay, I'm gonna do a little sleuthing here real quick. I really thought I had that pencil nailed. Let me see if it's this one. It's this one. All right, that one's a little brighter, I think. I might have used two on here. No, nope, these look like they're matching. That's okay, we'll have a little bit of both. I'll put that real bright in, in this area and then I'll put the darker around the other area. Yeah, the, 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 um, that happens with the Diane's Townsend. You have to really look at them and make sure they look black. And they should say, when you look at the families when you're ordering Diane Townsend, you'll see that they say extra dark and that can be a little bit tricky. Hey, Lori, welcome. I'm so glad you had to do some chores. All right. Helene, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. So I'm going to put this really bright one right here because I'm thinking, you know, that's kind of like a highlight. And then I'm going to take the darker and um, put that on the outer edge. Now, like I was saying, I, I, I usually will put a layer of pastel down, pan pastel down first as like an underpainting. And, but then sometimes with some of these smaller bits, it's like, I'd rather just use the pencils. So this paper takes the pencils really well. I think I'm gonna do this third circle here with the bright pink. I love the bright pink with this like, permanent green. Lori, I'm so glad you made it today.
Hi, Sharon. Welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. Okay. So I've got that and then I have this. Um, so this one was a, uh, since we're all about pencils, um, this is a 582. It's a Karen Dash. And then this is a pit pencil. It's a 124. And it's, it's close. It's just a little bit darker. They're like, they're like relatives. They're like in the same pastel family, like the pan pastel structured and families. And it looks like these, these two are in the same family. Cause you know that having an underpainting helps you save some of your pencils. So that helps, but I'm not really doing a ton with just the pencils. So plus I just like the feel of them. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm a huge pan pastel fan, but so I want to carry this over. I'm going to do this little circle right here. It's going to actually probably look red because it's so up against that red. And I think I'm going to carry down this little hair. I really like that color against the green. And I'll even carry it down a little bit more. So Helene, you've ordered the Karen Dash pencils. I'm really excited all because the blue you were using a couple weeks ago, I ordered the Wolf Carbon pencil and I also purchased two pit colors. Awesome, Helene. Welcome. I'm so happy. Congratulations. If I'm inspiring you guys to show up and create and, and use this beautiful magical medium, that makes my day because I just really love pastel and I, I just think it's a, not as um, well known. So I'm excited to demystify a lot of this um, anxiety that comes with pastel. You know, it's sometimes we, what we don't know, we get nervous. So I, I like that um, pink together. So now I'm, I'm popping some of the petals with the pink, that Karen Dash. And Karen Dash really goes well on the top. And I'm gonna do this one too. I don't know what I want for the color of this little centers here. Um, what do you guys think? I'm, I've been debating against putting orange in there. Um, or I can just go with like a dark um, magenta inside there like this, this, this magenta. Um, any, uh, I'll leave that out there for a while if you guys have an opinion or if you want another color, you know, think about that. Magenta. We got an orange and a magenta now. <laughs> All right. Okay. So the thing with, here's the big stressor about using, um, and I even pulled it up today cause I'm, it's so funny cause I have the ivory paper I'm using today, but I pulled the black for my pencils to, you know, sample on. And that's just because I use black so much. But I do want to share what I've learned about the black paper versus the ivory. The ivory paper, you really get to hold on to the glow. You have to build that up a lot. You have to really say, I am protecting those brights. And um, when you're doing faces especially. And so I got really drawn to like go back and try the ivory on this whole thing. And, um, but the thing with the, uh, the dark paper is you can see in here, I think you can see it. Oh, my thing fell just a sec. I think you can see it pretty well. You can see from back there how like, I'll even zoom in real quick. Okay. So she zoomed in and what I want to show you is the differences between the black paper and the ivory is see all these little white little flecks. And that's what I'm going to be doing with the pencils, the throw down 
is even right in here, I want to, um, I can't, I have to pull, uh, her up to, to, to show you the other flower, but you can see in here all these little white little peaks that, that are peeking out and they're everywhere. Um, that's because I just blocked in and when I'm blocking in, those are going to peek out because I don't have an underpainting. Um, that's why a lot of artists do underpaintings, is they want whatever color to be under on the base. That's why colored papers are popular, like terracotta, the greens, the blacks, because my process really leans into the black peeking through. And I like that. Um, I hit black on a lot of stuff, so that really works to my advantage. Instead of here, I have to touch all that. And on my other paintings, I wouldn't have to because it works with my black lines that I've already made. It, it, it pushes it in. So you're not um, fighting against this ivory peeking through. Now, I, I don't mind it on some things. You know, I, I realize that that's part of this process, so I've accepted it. But I really want you guys to understand what the difference is between working on a colored paper with an under, you know, an underpainting versus I'm just going in raw on, on this color. I could put like um, an underpainting with pastel all, all down there, spritz it with alcohol. I could try all kinds of stuff like that, but I don't want to fill up my tooth too much. And the whole reason why I'm using the ivory is I really want to keep the luminosity. So I just want you to see some of that up close so you can see what, what's different. Um, here we go. Okay. Yeah, and, and black has a lot of contrast, um, Danielle, it, that's for sure. So the black gives a lot of contrast. It's a ton of fun. I love it. But when you're working with figurative, I do kind of have a tendency to want to lean forward. I'm trying to see, like, I'm going to pop this in here. So I'm working on her. She's at a weird angle because I, let's see if I go forward here. I could probably, whoops. Okay. So this is on black paper and I've really had to work to keep any luminosity in her face as much. And I, I do, um, I do get success at it. It's just, I want you guys to see the difference. All my black gets buried in. So I'm not fighting against it as much. So I want you to see the, the whole piece, but, um, it's, this is one of my favorite pieces that I've been working on. I'm filming her to do a time lapse for, um, YouTube. So that's why she's not done. But, um, I, I just want you to see maybe the differences between the face luminosity. Let me get it to focus. Oh, it's being finicky. So just a minute. Come on. There we go. So you can kind of see a little bit of the difference there, how you have to really build that up and be a little bit more aware. Oh, I'm glad you guys liked her. Thank you. <laughs> that one is a, that's a large one. It is a 12 by 16. Um, I love working in that size. So um, it, it's a favorite of mine. She's been sitting there for a couple months now because I started filming her um, for a, a time lapse. And um, I have, I want to finish it because it took a lot of time. And so uh, I haven't been able to work on her lately because of, you know, I'm doing something new with this whole live streaming thing. So uh, yeah, I have a couple of them like that, but she's one of my favorites. I think I got all the questions answered. Okay, so I'm basically spending a little bit of time and I don't mind if I'm starting, I'm going to start maybe burying some of these, these lines in here. I'm okay with that. Um, this is where I'll bury some of the, um, the black. And if it doesn't bury all the way, I'll go in with the eraser. If I know I want to bury it, I'm going to take this line right here. Whoa. 
What's this? Sorry. This thing can be a, kind of a weapon in here. This is my dowel. I actually got this from a toy. It's covered in like a silicone, but it's just basically a dowel. And um, I took it from a toy that I got at a garage sale a long time ago. And it's been one of my favorite little finds. So I want this little hair to be the pink. And you know, sometimes when you're on this journey, you don't know what, especially when you're rainbowing things out, I don't know what color is gonna end up being dominant. I, I fought against this one a little bit because the one of the pieces I have finished, um, her sister, let me, I'm just gonna show it to you. I have her, I'm loading her into the store and um, I can show you her right now because I have her out and her sister, was a lot more violet. So when, and I also use a little more sticks on her on this one, but she was more violet. So this is who was inspired from this one. Um, and so this one, I ended up uh, going a lot more blues and a lot more violet and I'm going a lot warmer with this one. So it, it, it's just trying to find that little happy medium with the warmth. And so this is a lot cooler, as you can see, and then this one's a lot warmer. So now I think I got that one. I have this little turquoise spot. I wanna fill, get everything blocked in here real good. Oh, I got to see if you guys ended up um, picking a color. Oh, thank you. Thank you, the geisha. Yeah, the hair looks geisha in the sister. Thank you, Laura. That's fun. I never thought of it like that. Love the dowel. When I use glassine paper, it kind of smeared underneath. Yeah, I can't ever put glassine on here and work. I usually will have to use a dowel. Even if you're sitting, a dowel works great. If you don't have a dowel, then... Um, I'm sure some of you might have a long paintbrush that you can use, and that really works really well. Um, I have seen um, uh, one of our members in our community, her name's Agnes, she uses the lid of a pan pastel, but I still find that would mark up in my work. So um, I think using a stick or a dowel is really key. So I'm just filling in some of these gaps I have around here and um, getting rid of any of those like white flecks that I want to, mer you know, like I have right up here. I'm not a huge fan of this spot right here. I pulled a color for it and um, I have two. I have this kind of a darker reddish, so it would go dark, but I also have this um, magenta darker violet. I think I'm going to go with the darker magenta just over this. Even if I let some peek through. I forgot what we got. I got to go look and see what you guys voted on the little flower there. So And this kind of harmonizes colors too, so it's okay if they mix. And I, I wanna use a few darker colors on the edges because I want more of my bright colors in here. I had this spot here too. I want it to go a little darker. This was the spot here that I had for, um, that had that violet. So I'm just going over it. Okay, so any of these edges, I'm kind of hitting it with this darker color. Well, I just felt like it was so long since the last time we were on here. I don't know, I felt like time just slowed down a little bit. So I'm glad to be back. 
So you can see how that's kind of almost stopping the eye a little bit from going off. I'm gonna hit this edge. I can go back over it with the, with the red too. I might even So this is one of those where you can start, like I start putting down lines and shapes and it'll start harmonizing things together. Oh yeah, Helene, um, in this little flower center, so I'm trying to decide if I should put this bright magenta that I have right here or if I should go orange or I could even do like, well, I never really like to use green in the center of a flower, but I'm thinking like orange like this fun, bright orange, maybe even one, maybe even this one, and then I could put orange on top. I got this one or this, this bright magenta. That's what I was kind of thinking about. Yeah, the violet, I'm not bringing more, any more violet, like this is the violet I'm, I, I would do for the flower. Cause I, all of the, this is all the same family right here, see? Someday I'll learn how to get these um, poles going. Let me see. I still haven't been able to really get the pole um, to go, but yeah. So that was the vote there. So I'll give you guys a few more minutes and then I'll just pick whoever's got the most on there. So it's the magenta or like the orange, unless you guys have something better. So I'm gonna put this one aside and then I have a few more spots here that I wanna, I think I might even go hot pink on that one too. I'm really liking the pink. Orange, orange, violet, magenta. I think I'm two and two. Magenta, orange. Wow, you guys are pretty split in the middle on that one. <laughs> no, that would be. Um, let me see here. I want to take and play with her neck here a little bit. Let me get that feeling a little good while you guys are. I'm going to go this dark magenta. I got to get a couple layers on here a little bit before I can put pencils in this area or I'm going to be working really hard. So if I find a color it gets too unsaturated or it's too black there, I'll just mix in another color with that. You know what? I do have orange down here, you guys. I might go for the orange because I got this one with orange right here. So I think that's going to seal the deal for me because there are quite a few guys have ordered, uh, have uh, voted orange too. So let's do that and we'll just see what it looks like. And then, um, because it will match this one down here, see? So then we would have repetition. And the cool thing, like we all know, is it can change.
And I'm going to take a little bit of this pink and try to get some of these little um, whites covered up that are peeking through. Okay. So I feel like I've just totally ignored her neck. I'm going to bring that up a bit. And I also have these little white spots that I'm talking about that I'm trying to merge because that tattoo isn't, it's a part of her, not a separate entity. <laughs> Now you can see I'm getting some of that black from my pencil and I'm okay with that because I'll just go over it again and that's going to give me a, a base with like some shadow that I don't mind working with. I'm also going to blend in this green spot right here. I didn't like that. And then I'm going to take a little bit of black and lightly tap it on the inside of this fern. And I'll be able to hit it with a brighter color as we go, I'm just trying to get a little bit of depth in there. And see, like I'll use that black to create shadow on the on the leaves. So sometimes when it gets knocked down a little too far, I, I miss it. I never really spent a lot of time on, on the um, fern yet, so I think it needs a little bit of love so I can put pencils on it and all of that. And what I'm thinking about right now is just getting those values, like I, I know this part's in the shadow so we don't necessarily need it to be as there, like yelling at you, you know, like I'm here. So I'm going to want to knock this down just a hair carefully so I don't lose the shape, but it also um, goes knocked back with the piece, you know, like So I wouldn't have known how far to knock this back if I didn't get, you know, everything blocked in. And now I can fuss around with that and kind of go, okay. And I'm okay if, if some of those leaves, they're just not as dominant shape there. Oh, let's see. Much richer. Seems to merge and combine the two. They feel more one section now. Do you mean like the flower, Stacy? Francine, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. 
popping in between students. Now, do you teach horseback riding? Um, remind me what, what you do. I'm trying to see. Um, I don't have you down. <laughs> I try to take notes. Um, I, 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 I know you're with horses. So, oh, you mean the fern, the fern. Yeah. Okay. That makes more sense. Oh, a free paint stir stick from the hardware store for the, for the dowel, you guys. That works great too, because they have long ones for those five gallon buckets. So that's awesome. So you can see how the fern, you know, is starting to be a little bit part of her. And I have this shirt here. And I'm just gonna have to play around with this part. Normally I just do skin a lot of times, but this time I did a shirt. But you can see how I've spent a lot of time focusing on these white little um, spots, just, just kind of knocking them back a bit. And I can create more definition by using the edge of my wand there. And I, and I don't want these tattoos to be something that you're staring at a lot. It's not the focal point of my piece. She looks gorgeous. Love that turquoise. Yes, I do. I teach horseback riding lessons. Well, that's wonderful, uh, Francine. I, I had two horses growing up. I love horses and I, I wish I would have gotten more formal training, but I just lived on a small eight acre farm and um, I was really grateful to have that experience with horses growing up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is that's gonna allow me, so see how bright the face is and this is really in the dark. I'm gonna bring a little bit of this out. I'm gonna use a different wand here. I know we're doing the you know so-called pencil throwdown, but I have to work with whatever kind of comes up and I'm feeling like this is one of those things that I want to focus on a bit. Now this is a harder spot, like I'm thinking of light. Um, I might just create a line here and I'll just see how that looks. So you can see how I had all those under colors and then when I add a, a tint, it really um, brings it up to a skin tone. I might just blend that and let it be a soft transition. We'll see how I feel. Sometimes I get really obsessed with light and sometimes I'm like, okay. And I'll probably tone this down a little bit. I'm just getting it where some of this is gonna look like skin. It'll bring it up a little bit more. Tapping in a little or yellow. Temple, I'm so sorry you're having internet issues. Oh, the internet, that is really frustrating. I'm glad you like the shirt, Stacy. thank you. Isolina, welcome. I'm so glad that you came into chat today. You're, you're, this is your first time in chat. Welcome, I'm so glad you're here. You are blessed to have had that in your childhood, Dawn. Yeah, I'm really grateful that I've had that. I would love to go out and um, I want to do one of those like where you're camping and you, you take the horse up to some type of um, location and um, I want to take my husband on something like that someday because he, he didn't grow up with, with horses and I really miss like just that riding. I used to ride so much.
So the other thing I'm working on is just getting the layers built up so my paper isn't just peeking through. Um, that skin's bringing that up is helping and then I can blend it in to the neck a little bit. And so you can see how it makes the face and the neck not look such a separate entity is you're trying to harmonize that. And I will tap in different colors of tints to do that. And um, I'll probably have to bring color back in to um, create a definition of the light because I don't really have that mapped out. My, my reference is very, um, not a whole lot of light source. She's got some right here and here. Normally I like to have something that's really defined. Her face is really defined, but I'm not really using her right now. I'm just kind of doing my own thing. <laughs> so, so I'm tapping that because I got some black. Okay, so I'm feeling pretty good about the neck right there. I'm probably gonna put some of this ultra, you know, extra dark magenta in here. So that at least brings that together a little bit more and then we can, you know, move with that. I feel like I'm looking at it through like it, this is how a camera would work for me. I'm looking on my screen. It's a little, a little dull. Okay, so I'm not loving this spot right here, but I will have to, you know, it'll come around. It'll start giving me answers. So I'm thinking I'm probably gonna break this up a hair. I'm gonna put in some dark down here in the corner. Oh, I had, thought I had black on there. I'm gonna darken it a little bit. This is the diarolide um, green that I had down. And now I'm just making it, an this is the extra dark diarolide yellow actually. And um, I'm just uh, knocking it into making it like an extra, extra dark. And I can always bring it back up a hair, but you can see how that kind of um, just helped break that up a bit. It was really flat. And you know, it also, you know, because Pan Pastel works as families, it is all families. It took me like a couple years to realize this, you guys. I had no like someone to watch and anything like that. So for those of you that are new here and watching this video, just remember that pan pastel is structured as families. So if you have all the burnt sienna, this is the burnt sienna core. And this burnt sienna, if I add white to it, will make a tint, which is the tint for burnt sienna. And then if I add black to it, it'll make a shade. And if I add another black to it, it'll make it extra dark. So like when I just took black and brought it into this diarolide, which was actually a diarolide um, extra dark, I can't go any darker with pan pastel with that. So I made it go into a, an extra dark and then brought it even darker, but they're in the same family. So I'm just using the idea of value. And that is how you can add more black to get more value, more white to get more highlights. And all of these um, uh, cores are usually hanging around about here. So you're, you're basically pushing and pulling your values by using the black and the white in the pan pastel system. So when you really hold on to the idea of that system, then you can really utilize that in um, using the black and the white in that way. A lot of times I'll just use a tint, 
because um, I like to add that extra color for harmony. And so that's what I'm thinking about that. I'm going to replicate this, this orange vibe in here with the, with the, um, this pink. And then I think we almost have everything blocked in and we're at good time. So I have an hour. There's no way I'd be able to finish this today, guys. See, I really have to think out um, what I'm creating for these lives if I want it to be done in um, one in two sessions. So that's why I was worried about this one, like having you just see me work on a piece that I would work on if I wasn't teaching and stuff. So you're on my leading edge, people. This is this is the real deal. It, I mean, some of these pieces can take a while. So it looks a little dull, but that's okay because then that gives me something to put pencils on and stuff like that. Um, I don't want to have to put so much pencils on this, on these clothes. I'm going to bring up this shoulder like this is in the light. And I'm using some of this. This is the um, bright yellow green shade. I mean, the, the shade is pretty... Uh, pretty bright already and I have permanent green in these areas and I think I also have the uh, hands of yellow extra dark that I use in some of them um, so I'm just putting some of this over it and then they'll mix into another color too And I'm being really careful right now because I'm up against some black right here. I'm okay with mixing that in. But what I'm focusing on is, is I have all those white little edges and I'm trying to get them harmonized in there. This is where I went on with a stick. So I'm actually knocking quite a bit of that stick off, but I have to harmonize that little edge there. So I'm feeling I have quite a bit of lines on there for the um, clothes, but I think it'll start blending in here. And like I said, it's not meant to be like a defined. I don't really want people zygoing going here. Like I'm going to put on some of this is this is this um, hands of yellow extra dark. Temple, I've been having iPads issued. Yeah, I'm so sorry about your iPad, Francine. I'm going to email you again. I have that idea test that we talked about. Um, thank you for welcoming uh, Isolina. I'm so glad that we have a, a new person here in chat. And um, it's just great to have everyone here. Daniela, welcome. I think you're new here in chat. That's awesome. Your first time live. Yeah, I'm catching up with you now. That's great. Thank you so much for coming. I'm so glad you're here. Um, I, uh, so I'm just playing around trying to figure out how I want, what I want of this little area. And I'm okay with those colors harmonizing together. So you can see that it, it might not look like a big change, but um, it, it, it's just taking those, those edges and getting rid of the um, whites that are there. It just takes a little bit of time. Santal Knit. I'll call you Santal. Welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, welcome. Thank you for saying hi. All of you guys, I love it when you guys say hi. I love... This month, I'm really all about being community focused with this channel and um, it's all about the chat with me. Uh, I'm just really grateful that you're here. It's fun sharing this journey with all of you and this magical medium that I love so much. So I am using two wands. I have one that's really, really dark. That's because I've hit it into this um, dark in the background here. I'm, I'm using that to kind of shade out some areas. 
I'm being really gentle, guys. Like I am not putting a ton of pressure and I'm, I'm blending this area and you're gonna see it subtle, but um, if I want those to go a little darker because I'm thinking her hair, I'm just gonna go a little bit darker. Because this isn't really my um, focus. I went a little hard there and it pulled up some. I just really don't care if that just blends together. This could just be one larger swoop. I'm fine with that. It's being a little finicky on that edge right there. So this is usually a stage where I'm using a lot of pastel pencils. I just really feel like I needed to give her neck some love <laughs> and her clothes because you can see right now when you look over everything that it is um, harmonizing. I have some white spots right here and I think what I'm gonna do is use this. I'm, I'm not sure if this is too dark. No, this isn't too bad. This is a Carbothello 530. I'm gonna create a line here and it's gonna start being a stepping off point to incorporating the pastel pencils. I like this little highlight mark here. I have a darker one. This is the um, Carbothello 590. I'm just trying to get a little bit of definition in here. And then I'll just start. I'm starting the pencil throw down. I'm fully warmed up now. We're at 238. We got an hour with that. What's cool is that you can even take the pencil that I've already started with and start putting in and if I want that to fade up a little bit darker I switch the darker pencil So you can see how I'm just, it's all about layering. You gotta be willing to, to build up those layers and then it allows you to do so much. So I'm really liking the collar right there and I feel like I could carry that out a little bit even in here. I might take this extra bright one. That one might be a little too bright, but let's just. No, I kind of like it. I'm going to fade it into this. So I'm all about transitions as I'm just building transitions all the time. That's what my mind's thinking about. How can I blend that into that? And then I like to not have it all be perfect. So I'm liking the neck. I didn't expect to like really be able to develop the neck yet to that point. Um, now I can play with this uh, pencil here. I'll take a look at chat here in just a minute. So this is where the Carbothello can be a little tricky. And I'm okay if it's a little messy because we're not about, I'm about like uh, being, so see this is, here's an exact problem. So I, I'm on live and I thought, well, I'll try the pencil sharpener. Um, even though I, you know, I'm probably due to maybe get a new sharpen, but um, Carbothello does have a tendency to um, break with a pencil sharpener. So I'll use an, um, 
Let me show you guys. This is a great tip. I'll just use a um, uh, an X-Acto knife. So I'll sharpen that and it takes a little bit of time sometimes. Sometimes they're okay and they work with my pencil sharpener. I have to really change my lead quite a bit. Um, I mean my, my blade. And then once you got it um, to where you want it, we're already using sandpaper. So say I have this, this, you can make it into a tip by just, I mean, you are, excuse me, you are wasting a little bit, but you can get that tip that you want if you're wanting a line. I wanted to just put these little lines in there. I'll probably end up going over the top with like, Let me see here, I use that dark pink. I'm gonna push that back a little bit. I just gotta find my pink. I have this pencil that I really love that I think everyone might you know, want to get if you're all about the pencils. Um, I talk about it in my lives quite often. This is a pit pencil. It's a 175 and it's just not as black. And so um, it, it's, I call it my shadow pencil. And if for some reason I want to create some shadows, if I've overdone something and I want to do some depth, it's just a great pencil for that. I can even, um, it just isn't as black, so it's not as dramatic. Yeah. And I even like to take an, um, So I've just merged those little areas like that. Okay, I'm gonna check um, chat. Oh, well, Francine, you have a great day. I'm so glad you came in and said hi. And um, I, I'm excited that you'll be here Thursday for the full live. She's definitely gonna need another day. Um, we won't get it all finished today. And um, I'm so glad you popped in. Let's see. Okay, so you guys are all talking to, to Santal. Welcome. I'm so glad she's, and Daniela, she's going through the videos. Yeah, I also want to say this might be a really good time. I'll put a link on here. I'll grab a drink of water. Did I forget my water today? No, I got it over here. I'll grab a little drink. I'm going to put a link here to my um, free Pan Pastel membership area for those of you that are new. If you sign up for this, you'll get a... Um, uh, you'll get access to some of my other free pan pastel um, videos. It also has a couple with my line art, more like a lesson format. And you'll also get a notification asking if you want to be part of my newsletter, if you want to keep up. And I, I newsletter out every Tuesday right now to remind Tuesday morning to remind people of the lives. So um, definitely uh, join the pastel area if you want to learn more too. It's a little bit more than what's on a YouTube and then, um, hi Cassie, welcome. So glad that you're here. Okay, so I'm gonna pin that. I've actually learned how to do that, guys. Okay, good, good. I'm glad, Daniela, that's wonderful. Okay, so I've pinned that, and then later on I have a couple more things to show you guys too. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm feeling really good, but you can see how much time this, this takes. 
Um, I love this little area down here. I think it actually like composition wise just brings your eye. Like we're, we're trying to stay in here and I like how that ties everything together. So I'm feeling really good about that. And her skin, I feel like I wanna work on this um, flower a little bit. And um, I have the uh, dark magenta and I'll probably bring her up a little bit. I might bring this on the inside since this is so much darker. But you can see having a, um, having an underpainting with the, with the pan pastel and really defining some of these areas really helps use the pastel pencils and not have to overuse them. I feel like that's a little wonky right there. I think you guys can probably, yeah, you can see she's got a little, she's got a little glitch in her giddy up right there uh, or whatever that is in her neck. We don't want her to have like a, a hump on there. Let me see. God, I thought about changing my, my blade for my sharpener and then I thought against it. So watch how you can totally take that down. I think that did it. And if I want this spot, I'm using that shadow pencil again, this pit pencil, the 175. And say I want to knock this down to like a, a, a shade. Then I'm going to Yeah, I kind of want that there's a little bit of light peeking in there. I like that. And then I'm going to go back and forth here a little bit. So you can see, I want that to look like it's underneath the hair, like this hair is on top. You de bombed on, pin like a professional. <laughs> Thank you, Stacy. I'm learning, man. I'm on eight weeks of the live streaming and i will say you know on a on a personal note i've been really you know i'm 51 and i feel like i'm just getting started and i and i want to share this because um i think it's really important i i'm really trying to get uncomfortable because i feel like we kind of stop learning when we, when we get too comfortable and um this was huge for me to go live and every week i struggle with something mentally <laughs> Like I get caught up in something or overthink things. I mean, Lori, who is oh shiny art, she's on here. She knows I talk to her um, all the time, but you know, it, it's a lot of just getting uncomfortable and really not always knowing what the outcome's gonna be and letting go of the control. And um, this has been really powerful for me to be on here live. Um, it's just, as much as it's for you guys and connecting with you and, and inspiring you about uh, this beautiful medium, it's also something for me. And I, I just really um, feel like it's filled a, a gap. And I'm, I'm so grateful to be uncomfortable every week a little bit. You know, like I feel alive. It's been a lot of fun. But I honestly, um, what I wanted the most out of this was to build a sense of community and connection because we, as artists we work alone a lot and um, it's it's been missing you know I, I miss being able to talk to artists and other creatives and, and this has just been a lot of fun and um, I'm grateful for you guys so thank you for your support and and helping me build this channel and it's it's all about you guys too it's definitely not just a on me you know um, I'm almost fully monetized, you guys. I'm, I think I'll be there at the end of the month. And I'm still trying to figure out what I want to set up for like a membership area because I got that. And then um, I got the super chats and all of that. That's been a lot of fun. And um, so, yeah, I just want to thank you guys for being here. We definitely got to get uncomfortable sometimes. It, it, 
it feels really good. It, it doesn't feel good and then it does feel good. Because <laughs> like, I think I'm constantly pushing and learning stuff about myself along the journey too. And, um, and it's vulnerable. Art is vulnerable. You know, it's like we're sharing a, a big part of who we are when, when we're sharing even on social media. Um, okay, so I'm really liking that so far. I feel like I'm making some headway. I'm going to bring in a little bit of this lighter pink. This is a um, 124 Pit Pan pa um, Pastel Pencil. I'm trying to get where I don't want it to be crazy in your face, but you can see how I'm hitting all the edges here. I might have to bring a little bit of this back up a bit. That's going to be a little dance. I can feel that. Oh, I hit it with something. I hope this was the pen. What? So I just set down. I think this is the one I'm, yeah, this is the one I'm playing with. So I'm going to sharpen this one a little bit. It's starting to get pretty dull. So I have all of this stuff I'm using in the um, description below. So if you guys, um, like I have the pencil sharpener in there, the paper that I'm using, and I've even mapped out these. So the only thing I don't have that you have to listen for the video is calling out some of the pencils. It's funny because I really thought I'd be all over her hair today, but I really think intuitively Sometimes I'll question, like, why am I not doing that? And I think my intuition's going off and saying, well, you need to bring up her other areas to make it, you know, har har harmonize. And so um, I think that's what's going on. Well, I know that's what's going on. I'm just able to put it into a little bit more of words. I feel like I want that to be... Maybe a little bit more darker. I'm gonna use my shadow pencil. I'm gonna to have to kind of blend this. So I'm gonna take this and a little bit of my darkest pastel wand that I have here. So if I get where I get a lot of sediment on my piece, I will usually bring it out um, side to blow off um, or I will tap it into a bag or a bin. I don't want it to look like it's coming off her skin, but I also have to blend that so that'll probably be a, a journey along the way because it is a little bit in shadow and so but I'm really liking that I'm a spring chicken <laughs> thank you you're making it look easy though well I, I appreciate that I mean for those of you that are here I'm probably 7,000 hours in on soft pastel only and I've been creative doing different types of mediums for over 25 years. And um, yeah, the pastel though is what I've been keeping track of the most and it's been a journey. Would a regular white eraser not be the same as the cheap Joes? I don't know what you mean about cheap Joes. Um, my favorite white eraser is the Vanish one, four in one from um, Jerry's Artorama. That's linked in um, the description below. The reason why I like these, it's a super soft um, eraser. It um, it's just really works well with this paper. It um, 
it's just I can cut it up and do different things so if you get a white eraser it just needs to be soft um, that's the, the main thing about the eraser I found this one and I buy them in bulk now and haven't really looked back so um, you can try out a regular white eraser you just don't want them hard it needs to be a soft eraser Paula Lewis I'm, I'm you made it for the live welcome Paula I'm so glad that you're here Oh, thank you, Stacy. I really appreciate that. My husband and my brother and everyone like Don. You, you, this, you should be doing this. I feel like it's the first. You know when you kind of like find your jam. You're like, oh, this is what I should be doing. <laughs> and I just that's how I feel about um, being on the lives. Okay, so I've spent a lot of time down here. You guys have been really patient, but I want you guys to see. I've probably spent a big chunk of time down here and I still feel like it's not fully finished. I feel like there's some transition areas right here that are a little wonky, but overall I'm feeling really good about the flower. I might, I might tone down this orange a little bit. That's something I, I'm thinking about, but right now I'm going to take some pencils up here and start playing. And I, this is a Carbothello uh, 585. And you can see, I tried to even value scale these. This is a six on the value scale. I know it's a little darker and I wanna go in between these petals on here. Yeah, my, um, on the whole like being experienced doing this live thing. Um, so I taught, I've been teaching online for over two years. And um, I think that experience really helped me go into doing the lives and my, my in-laws were here and they're in their seventies, mid seventies or actually a little. Yeah. And, um, they came and they, I was telling them about all the lives and they didn't really get it. And they watched me on TV and everything. And, and they were like, this is pretty cool. And, and, um, they came up to my studio and saw all the setup and how I have to talk to this little camera. I got my text. I have you guys in chat right here on my phone. It's basically right in my face where my, where my webcam is. And then I have uh, a camera for my um, palette. That's a separate camera. And then my art is on a separate camera. That's on a full tripod setup, which you can kind of see that behind me. But, um, and I work in a little like probably two foot by two foot space. <laughs> and then my, my um, I'll have to do a little video sometime. And then over to my left is my, um, my computer and I had if you go watch my studio tour that's on here it was it's one of my best watched videos it's got like 20,000 views I've, I've, I've always been so excited about that video but it was done a few years ago and I had all my pastels laid out I still have my pan pastel out like that but I had to put all my stick pastels away and I had to put all my pencils away to do this setup and um it was a journey because I had to really revamp the studio for it. And, um, but it is all set up now where I'm teaching a lot too. I'm making classes also, not just doing the lives. So um, it's all working now, but it's definitely not as uh, where I have everything out like I used to. Okay, so I'm just starting to go around with some of the pastel pencils and um, take some of the colors that I've already laid down and I'm just going in and either cleaning it up or adding to it and make, you know, some of that contrast right there, making more patterns. I have a lot of this diarolite in here and then I'm using this, basically it's in the family of, you know, the yellow green. It has just a little bit more, um, uh, it's a little warmer, warmer of the green. So I'm just thinking about where I wanna play with that. And I got it right here. I think I'm gonna, try to just create some loose marks here to get me going. So with all this hair, I, it's, it's a playground for me of mark making. I will go over and over and over it and that's how I get all of the depth into my pieces that the secret magic, the secret magic to like art, I feel, is layering. 
So I had a woman, she posted on one of my posts the other day. Uh, I don't think she realized the sanded paper was, was key. And um, she posted that she didn't understand how I got the vibrancy and the layering. And you know, this paper allows a lot of layering. So that is a, a big plus in it. Now I kind of wanted to do the stripes right there. Um, I'm going to see what it looks like. So if you're new and you're having a hard time getting the um, UART paper, and even if you just want to try a sanded paper out, from my knowledge, I'm going to go get it some myself, but Michelle, who's usually here, she went and got um, the wet dry sandpaper from the you know, a hardware st on Amazon, I think. And it's a 600 grade and she had a really good experience with it. I'm going to try it out. I mean, I don't think you can replace the, um, the UART paper, but it does allow people and you know, you can erase everything off on the UART, but I'm looking right now for like this paper pencil. This is, this is a car. Um, this is the thing about, um, Karen Dash that's different is it has this, um, these muted tones. See, this is, this is in the diarolide family. Like, look at, you can see that. Yeah. So if I want to scritch this up, I like to just start getting some mark making in here and I use the base layers so I can have these layers on top. I'm going to mess this up now that I've gotten it in there. And so this is how I abstract things is you have to incorporate some type of abstract along the way to really make the jump. You're, you're filling a gap. So if you go too much, then you don't have any, you know, if your gap's too big, you will feel overwhelmed. So I have known, I know that I want to take her hair and I want to abstract it, but I'm not abstracting every single thing in this piece. And it allows me to have that fun. And so, that's, that's kind of my, my goal here is just to have fun with the hair, but I'm also keeping in mind value and pattern and repetition and stuff like that. So I really love this diarolide. I haven't used it a ton because it's, this is one of those sneaky ones that unless you start really understanding your colors, you won't really understand that this is in the diarolide family. I mean, look at how close they are. And you just start kind of matching pencils up with their families and that really helps. Let's see here. Oh, thank you. Artorama. Okay, thanks. Reminds me of the artist Peter Max. I'll have to look him up. I, I've never heard of them before. Danielle, uh, it's great to see all the possible marks. Yeah, I really like to, to get into the mark making. Um, I think uh, that's what drives me in this style is, is I'm always leaning into my joy and I think some of my joy is the mark making and um, that is why I try to find more excuses to do it. So I can always go over that more later. I'm really feeling good about the diarolide. I've got quite a few spots in here. I feel like I've touched it. I'll probably go in with some dark in this spot. Yeah, I think I'm gonna switch to some other colors now. Let's see what time we're at. Oh, we're at 3.05, we have time to do more things. I'm excited. All right, getting my workspace where I can actually see my colors. Okay, I feel like I've brought in a lot of that green. I'm gonna take this, um, this is a really bright, Pan Pastel does not have this color. Um, when I use the turquoise here, you can see it, look on the palette, it's close, but it actually is a mix of turquoise and the permanent green. It's closer of the permanent green family than, than the turquoise. So I have, um, 
prod it in here. I'm gonna I've got some on my pencil. If you get too much of something on your pencil, just wipe it off on your towel. I think I'm going to put a different pencil on this edge here. I got a few of them there. Let me think. I might go hot, hot pink on that. So I'll eventually have to go to this face, this part right here, and work on figuring out if I want to blend her hair in, into the face. I might just naturally play with that right now and see what happens. I like um, blending the hair into the face and if it works naturally, I, I kind of go for it. So that's what you just witnessed. I think it's a kind of a cool moment. And then I'll take that orange Oh, I forgot to have a water. I'm going to have a little bit of a water break here, you guys. I realize if I don't do self-care, I'm, I'm in trouble afterwards. <laughs> I've also realized if I... Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if you can hear that on my back, but I needed to do that. <laughs> Sorry. I hope that didn't give you guys a BB. I needed to stretch out for a minute. I'm standing, and I find that when I do this standing... Um, I get really, uh, um, I get really like, I need to, to move more cause I'm, 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 I can't even think it. I'm flexing too much. Like I'm too, too tense and in intensely focused is what I am. Uh, I don't think you probably missed too much. Remember you guys, I'm also going to be showing at the end here, the, um, I'm going to be showing the, uh, where we started today and then where we went. So in this time, this is what I really love doing is I love taking these layers of pencils and um, it leads me to go, okay, I'm gonna do this next. So I didn't really go into this painting today and go, oh, I'm gonna do this to the face right here. Um, I did not think about that. It just, it's intuitive, it just kind of happens. And I think that's what the abstract is exciting for me, is I'm, I'm not having it all figured out. I, I, I really always have to remind myself I'm not um, immune to it, to play. A lot of my best work comes when I can come from a, a spot of play. Like, it's not precious dawn, it's just paper, you know? It's like, and if I went over some of this gold here, I can always put it back or I can take my, the closest thing to gold is my um, yellow ochre which they've changed the color to yellow oxide. See how this is in the same family? You'll start matching your pencils up if you start using them a lot. And if I feel like I want something to go back into the gold, I just use a yellow, yellow ochre. And you can't, even, you can't even tell. So you can see how I bring that back. So I'm doing this dance back and forth. So, even if you like took something like a being, like if you watch the being video and you did a being and then you use some of these mark making in practice, I think um, doing a smaller version is definitely um, easier and doable. You know, I might take this little spot right here. I'm gonna see what it looks like and I'm gonna go black. 
because I did that up here and I like that. And some of these spots, they're just waiting um, to tell me what to do. Um, each painting has its own voice, I've learned. And they, um, they don't, if you just sit back and listen, sometimes those little moments will get filled in and you'll go, okay, I like that. So let me see, I want to maybe carry this line and then just let it disappear or I'll just do kind of a little squiggle there. Yeah, I like that. So all of these little moments that I've created here are jumping off points to play. And um, I feel like that little spot, I'm going to leave it. I might go over it a little bit right here just so I get that angle. Might go in a little bit more. Yeah, I want to keep that line where where she's here, and I don't want to mess with that too much. Like I have definitely some work to do down here, so it's a journey, and I'm having a good time. I hope you guys are having a good time. <laughs> I really love um, these colors together. I'm gonna um, sharpen this so I can So you can see how that's just starting to pattern together. And I put that gold on the bottom layer so I can merge it together. So Ah, good that you took some time to drink and stretch. Yeah, perfect timing because you had to go t t talk to the contractor. <laughs> I actually really like the black there and here. Yeah, I, I, I black is like, for me, the composition, it really brings your eye through. It's something that I love to incorporate in my work or having it to be a 10 value somewhere. So you can see that it's really hitting that 10 and um, I like to, to carry that through. And I also feel like when you, when you change your li line thickness and thin, it, that's really powerful also. And so, let's see. Chrisella, so glad you came in and said hi. You're watching on the TV. That's a lot of fun. I've done that before. It's a lot of fun. Oh, so I really quick wanted to take a, a little moment before I forget. We have about 15 more minutes. I'll probably go a couple minutes after. But um, I want to show you guys because I have my um, originals going. I'm loading them in the store. They're going to be live in the store on Thursday, um, I'm hoping. And I'll put out a newsletter um, with them there. But I want to show you my framed ones. I, I have two framed ones. And then I think I have five... Um, nine by 12s. Some of them are from the lives and some of them aren't. Um, like I have, I want to show you them framed. So I'm also 
doing a video. I filmed me framing it and so you guys can see them how I frame. I know some of you have been wanting to frame your own art. Um, so yeah, um, I get all my frames. I buy them with my local framer and I work with my local framer. I also um, get anti-glare glass. It's very expensive, but I think it's worth it for the smaller pieces. And um, I've been framing for a few years now. I love it. You have to love it because it's very detail oriented and um, particular with the dust and everything. So this is um, the one that I have. Um, it soaks up your fingers, but um, so I, I do dust jackets and everything. And uh, so these are all framed. So I'll have um, two of these in the store and you can see how it doesn't really pick up much glare because it's got that special glass. And this one's called Illuminated Flight. And then um, I'm also going to have my, this is like my own little commercial for just a moment, guys. <laughs> so I also can have this one that I did during the live. I've done both of these during the lives and, and this one's Illuminated Journey. And um, so they're five by 10 size. So you can see they're almost big, as big as a um, nine by 12, you know, uh, cause this is a 10 actually. So it's pretty big. And so, yeah, I have these guys that they're all ready, but I teach, I show you in the video how I do all this and I'm hoping to have that video released here in the next week or so. Um, but I'll have these live on my website. These framed ones actually usually go pretty, pretty good. They sell pretty well. Um, but um, I also will be having my nine by 12s and I have this one out. So like, here's an example, the nine by 12s get shipped flat. I put them in between glassine with cardboard and um, they ship and then they're all signed on the back. And um, I also include uh, pastel framing instructions. So you can um, take it to your local framer and all of those questions are answered. So I'll have quite a few of the nine by 12s in there. I have a few in my store right now, but um, I'll put a link in there and I'll put that in there. So real quick, and then I'll finish out the live. So I appreciate you guys listening. <laughs> and then, um, so for those of you that are on my newsletter, you'll get a newsletter too. All right. Well, thank you for your guys' kind words. I appreciate it. I feel like someone came. Oh, Chrisella. That's Chrisella. 75 inch TV. Talk about art. That's a big TV. <laughs> thank you, Danielle. I appreciate that. And Cassie and Stacy. Um, thank you, Lori. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it. I used to only sell my artwork and I miss it, but I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out to incorporate them both. And, um, cause it, it's, it's fun to sell your artwork too and get that connection with people. And, um, yeah, so, okay. I'm going to work on finishing a few more of the mark making and everything before. And then it looks like on Thursday, I'll be, um, able to hopefully, <laughs> um, wrap the whole piece up. I feel like I'm at a faster pace right now. And that feels really good. So I'm going to bring in some red because we know how much we all like red. Oh, well, thank you, Stacy, for the super chat. I appreciate that. Oh, you're awesome. Thank you so much. Your third super on a live stream. That's awesome. Thank you, Stacy. I really appreciate it. That's so much fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to share the framing. I've been asked for so long about the framing video. And um, when I did the framing, I, I was so surprised how well it came together because um, I did it while I was framing those. So, so I'm going to, this red's a little bit darker. I'm going to go into here. I kind of want this to be messy. Stacy, you're awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, the super chats are cool. There's two kinds of super chats and super, um, uh, all of a sudden I can't think of the name, but, but one, you can have your, your, uh, saying highlighted and then one you get, uh, an emoji. And, um, I just got those in my, uh, monetization last, uh, I think last week. 
was my first one. So those have been a lot of fun. I've that's not why I started doing the lives, so it's a bonus for me. So it's really cool. So I'm taking this red here and I'm starting to harmonize what I created. And you can see that you're just really building up layers so you can play and, and have some of this fun. I love all the hearts, thank you so much. Got to give her some coffee or a smoothie or something for all this hard work. Thank you so much. Oh, Temple, thanks for thinking of Michelle. I, I miss you, Michelle. I know you're going to watch this, so I miss having you here. She's in Australia. She's been like a really amazing part of the community. So she always says this. Remember to thumbs up. So Temple did that today in honor of Michelle. Don't forget to like the video. So for free support, if you want to know how to support me for free, and this is what I really love is watching my videos. The more watch time I get, the more it helps my channel. Liking the videos, that's really amazing. And then um, after the lives, commenting on them, like coming back and commenting, telling me what you liked about the video, stuff like that um, really is helping my channel and um, grow. And so, and subscribing, <laughs> subscribing is great. So yeah, any of those things are really helpful. And I, I really appreciate him because I kind of have a feeling that eventually, if this keeps going the way it is, I might be on uh, YouTube full time. So that would be really awesome. Oh, AA, we got a new person. Hi, AA, welcome. So cool that you know how to frame. What got you into framing? Oh, well, that's sweet of you to ask. Um, I actually am a huge DIYer. I love to figure things out. I always have been. Lori's the same way. She's the oh shiny art. I love breaking systems down, figuring them out, and learning how to do them on myself. So I used to do baby photography um, before I had children. Um, I was really into graphic design. I was a graphic designer for quite a few years. And um, I didn't want to go back to work, so I was trying to come up with some work to earn some extra money so I could stay home with my kids. And um, so I did the baby photography and oh my gosh, it's so expensive to go get your stuff sometimes framed, you know, unless you know a little bit about it or you have a good relationship with a framer. So I started doing my own framing way back like 19 years ago. And, um, and then I just kept teaching myself and I would upgrade more and more. And um, I have the patience for it. I I like detail oriented stuff. That's kind of where my painting is, is, is I'm trying to not be so controlling and perfectionism I'm trying to shed, but I will say framing feeds my perfectionism soul because <laughs> you really have to look at the dust and, and those types of things and be aware and work in a clean area. So that's kind of what I ended up doing. I'm just, a, I love figuring things out and DIYing them. And, Saving money, I love that too. So thank you for coming in and saying hi, AA. Welcome, I think it's your first uh, live chat. That's really awesome. Maybe you and Lori will do a duo live video fun. Well, I don't know if Lori would be up to that, but <laughs> that would be, I don't know how we would do that. It's such a big deal to, to set up a live. I mean, she probably could get on a webcam where she could talk. But um, yeah, that would be hard. Isla, greetings from online family. So happy to be here with you all. Thank you for saying hi, Isla. That's awesome. I'm so glad that you came into chat today and, um, and, and said hello. So I'm really enjoying the red in this piece. I might even go around in some of these pink areas and pop in the red just to harmonize some things. Um, because I can, and I think it's, I like it. And if I see things, Andrea, welcome, Andrea. I love painting on the black and the colors pop so beautifully, especially pan pastels. Your projects are amazing. Thank you so much. The, the black has been a huge, um, love of mine. 
I mean, it's rare to have me working on the cream, but sometimes I like to go back and then it reminds me why I like the black. So you can see how these pencils are just like endless fun over the pan pastel. Like I, I like that, that's pretty spontaneous, so little addition there. And you know, remind, remember to look through your camera because there's things that I see that I'm kind of like, okay, well, I might come back over here I don't know. Yeah, I like that. And because I'm going over this orange, it's almost the same as this little pink right here. You know where I'm feeling like I, I, I want to keep the red up here, but I, I feel like I want to try something. I'm going to... I'm going to see what just one line up here does. You can't see that as clear as I can. And I definitely am starting to like see things like, you know, I get to bring up these flowers. I'm definitely bringing up more values here. I have two of them, yep. And I'm not loving this orange here, so I'm going to bring this up and I might Sometimes I like to just bring a spot together Like you could use a left hand. Welcome Kez, I'm so glad you made it. Good morning, are you, Kez, are you in Australia? I'm, I'm just wondering, I, I don't think I have you written down here. Is this, is this so, Etching your kids could. Okay, you're, um, Helene, tell me what that is. Is this so etching your kids could? I don't know what that means. If you could expand on that. Isla, I'm so glad that you joined us today. Templemore, we keep ya. Maybe yeah, we keep, we'll keep ya. Loving the blend in her dress, such a natural glow, and then the pop of her, of the electric teal. Thank you, Isla. I'm glad. Or Ayla. It's probably Ayla. I'm just horrible at pronouncing things. So I always like to find some spot to be messy where I can. I also really love um, this teal. I think I'm going to try it down here. Well, it's such a thin line, but... It looks really good having orange in it. I got some little spots in there. I'm definitely wanting to get this little area played with. I might even Try blowing her up a little bit. Wait, what time? It's 3.30. I'll do a little bit of this. I'm... Oh, 
I'll just stay on for a few more minutes. I'm gonna do a close up here so you guys can see some of these marks. So like you can see the red a little bit better now. I'm a little bit closer and all my squiggles. And then I'm gonna play with this pink here. And you know what I don't have a lot of is any really bright spots yet. So I'm gonna, this is a peach color. It's a 681. So it's not a white, but it definitely will help me bring up some of these spots. And I think we're gonna be working mostly with the pencils on Thursday. Oh, I gotta do my, well, as for those of you that need to go and all that, I'll really quick show you where we come from because I wanna do that on time every day. So I, I printed this out. It's a little like, it came out a little yellower than normal. I didn't have time to like adjust and I also printed out really big. So, so yeah, um, let's see, I wanna make sure. AKA Carrie, that's what it was. Yeah, I couldn't remember Kez if you, if you were um, from Australia. And Helene, I need, and Helene, before I go, I wanna answer your question. So I hope you'll rewrite that because I don't understand it. Um, Okay, so here we go. Oh, we're close now. You're not gonna build, darn it. Okay, I'll just put it out. Here we go, I'll put her back in. Okay. I forgot it. I did all that work and I wanna be able to show this on time. So I'll just leave it right there. So this is her, where we're at. And this was before, and I made the picture so big, but so that's before, and then you, I want you to, what I want you to look at right now is I want you to look at how choppy she is. So she's pretty choppy. It's almost like stained glass. And so I am, uh, you might call that the ugly stage or you might call that whatever. I like to call it the uncomfortable stage, but it's also the blocking in stage. So I block in, I have to spend all that time blocking in those colors. So look at how choppy all that is. And now I'm harmonizing. I'm working on harmonizing it all. So you're starting to see how things are smoothing out and they're starting to look a little bit more um, harmonious and the hair isn't as blocky. And um, the neck, look how much work we did down here today. So there's that and there we are. So a lot of work down below, you can see how if I, if I do this, you can see how much of those little white spots were, were peeking out. And that takes a lot of work to bring that in and how I've smoothed all that out. So um, I've also put the darks in. So you can see how punching through the dark really makes a big difference. And um, that's definitely a big part of the journey there. So. I hope printing out these befores and afters really help you guys see the journey because what we end up doing is we normalize, we normalize whatever um, we're looking at. And so you get where you're like, not really understanding how far we've come. And so I, I really like being, I even do that for my classes at times. I'll uh, show if I made a change and why I made a change. So you can see the befores and afters. So let's see here. So I'll just do a few more here. Uh, and, and then I'll, if you guys have any questions, um, this is a great time for your questions because I'm going to be signing off here in a few minutes. Okay, so let's see what you guys say. So good up close. Yeah, I, I might try to do this more often, get a little closer here. Can even, yeah, I think that's pretty close. Thank you. I'm glad you guys like seeing the before and after. Blocked in and choppy, still nice, but wow, really things are smoothing out. Yeah, it's all about the layering. All about the laboring, layering. 
good. I'm glad you guys like the before and afters. I really think those make this kind of really fun to be able to see where it's you know come from. And um, I think that's really important for people to see too. So I was, let's see where I'm at. I don't want to chop anything off. So I was taking this and I was just putting these on the tips of the flowers. What's a super chat? So you can do a super chat or a super, there's two of them. They're called, let me see real quick. You can do super stickers or a super chat. And that is a way to support the channel. Um, they go in dollar amounts and a super chat, you can put your message in there and it'll stay highlighted for a certain amount of time for how much money you spend. And then a super sticker is an animated sticker that you can um, have show up in, in chat. So it's a fun way to support the channel and, um, and participate. And so um, you can feel free to, to click on that little dollar sign down below. It won't make you buy anything, but you can go look at all the little cute things that let you do. So um, Lori, th thank you. It, it is a big change in the neck. I spent a lot of time on her, on her neck today. Um, thank you. I'm, I'm glad you think that. Oh, look, see, you did one. Cool, Daniela. <laughs> thank you so much. That's fun. And look, see, now this one is a super chat. And so, um, yay. So you can interact with it, everybody. Everybody, let's give Daniela a big heart or a thumbs up. You can thumbs it up or you can heart it up in the right hand corner. Uh, thank you so much. It's your first super chat on a live stream on YouTube. Thank you so much. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, uh, yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> I just think that's a bonus of this whole thing that that's just fun. So thanks for the support. I really appreciate it, Daniela. I'm glad you're loving the, the videos. A little Sonny's on the move. I wonder if he hears something. <laughs> so just a minute, buddy. What are you doing? You being sassy? Um, all right, so I'm basically going to be taking all these pencils and just keep um, going through and um, harmonizing some of these areas. And so I think on Thursday, that's, I'll be able to probably finish this. I do wanna bring some pencils in here. I wanna work on her eyes. I think these are a little bit bright right here. And I have some layers on her skin tone that um, I want. You can see it up close here. You can see right here, like that's paper showing through. This is all paper showing through. Um, so I need to build those up a little bit, like right here. And so those are some areas that I think. And I just love the layering capability of the pencils. I really want to put more red right here. I'm going to see what that looks like. Buddy, you're going to have to wait a minute. So this is where I just really love like patterns and yeah, I like that. So the, the next one is going to be a lot of these moments where I just start taking these and bringing them together. I think I might even carry this over in dots. I really love red and that turquoise together. They're just happy, happy colors. Okay. I have this little, see I want to do something with these rays too. This is another little spot up here that needs some love.
So just a reminder, I have a Facebook group that's in the um, description below. So if you want to um, join us there, that's a great place to share your work. It can be in any medium. It doesn't have to just be in pastel. I try to check in there um, at least once, once a day. Okay, guys, so I think what I'm going to do, I feel like I'm in a really good spot where next week, I mean, Thursday, <laughs> that I'm going to really be able to bring this um, to a, a place of being finished. Um, but I do feel like I have a lot more pencil work in, in, in here just to harmonize it and a little bit more pastel. I have the feather I have to do. I usually put like lines all in here. So I have a a lot, I feel like I'm just getting really warmed up to um, harmonizing all of her hair together and I'm having a great time. And so I'm just so glad you guys are here with me today. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for all your support. And let me just look at the questions really quick. Um, yeah, little Sunny, he was just sitting here and I think he has to go outside, but I'm going to, I'm almost done here. She finally knows how it works. Thank you, Dania. Daniela. I really appreciate that. Graphic design. Yeah. I have a, a background in graphic design. I, I found out I had a hard time trying to create what was in other people's heads. <laughs> I mean, not a hard time with it. I just didn't really like it. I didn't like um, that process for myself but I use all of my skills in my business. So it's not something that um, is lost. Ooh, the poster, Bob Dylan, I'm, I'll have to check that out. Time well spent, especially in the neck area. Thank you so much, Stacy. I'm glad you like the changes and everything. Yeah, Sunny has been quiet today. All right, you guys. Well, I can't believe another live has already been done. Oh, hi, Jamie. I'm so glad you're here. Um, and I, I can't believe it's already passed. I um, just had so much fun today. I hope you enjoyed the journey. Thank you for being here. And um, definitely subscribe if you haven't already. And I appreciate your support. So I will see you guys on Thursday. Come back. It's gonna, you're gonna wanna see. I'm gonna take a picture of this. And I'm going to show you, you're going to think, oh, it's almost done or whatever. And you're going to see how it, it still progresses. So um, I really, really appreciate it. Temple, so glad you're letting us come on this four-part journey. Dawn, since my internet, <laughs> getting, getting my thank yous in now. Well, I'm so sorry you had to deal with internet stuff today. Uh, you're welcome, AA. Thank you, guys, everybody. I'll see you on Thursday. Take care. Have a great rest of your, you know, midweek and I'll see you then. All right. Bye-bye.